Hey guys, thanks for joining me on another Backyard Castle Expedition. We're here at Hunting Tower, two castles for the price of one. This castle is so weird and that's exactly why I love it. When I said it's two castles for the price of one, I mean that it's actually two distinct tower houses built within three meters of each other. You don't get that anywhere else in Scotland. They were fused together in the 1600s to become the castle that you see before you today. Another weird thing about this castle is the location. We're just on the outskirts of Perth and this is a good proper sawed off castle. It's meant to withstand a fight. You don't find that kind of thing near the power center of Perth and Stirling very often. It was a threat to the crown. So what that tells us is that the people who lived here must have been pretty special to do so. When visiting these places, there's actually a lot more than initially meets the eye. You can see the tower, but what you can't see is the whole complex around it. In its heyday, there would have been formal gardens, orchards, stables, workshops. The tower would have only been the nucleus of a much larger operation. When we enter a castle like Hunting Tower, one thing we've got to remember is that private space back then is completely different from how we think of it now. Even if a lord of a castle was in their own chamber, for instance, they would still be receiving guests, perhaps even entertaining. There would be servants coming in and out. The whole idea of one room only doing one thing is a very modern one. Back then, it all happens in one place. Another awesome thing about Hunting Tower is that it's got one of Scotland's earliest painted ceilings, which you can see in behind me. There are all kinds of icons painted around this room, including a griffin, a lion with a man's head, an angel, a green man, all things representing what people would have believed in the 16th century. This is a style that comes to us from Scandinavia, and by having this in your home, you're showing off how rich, how worldly, how wealthy, and how important you are in the grand scheme of things. I'm standing next to a good old gun hole now, and a lot of the gun holes you see in Scots castles are more for show than anything else. They're there as a statement of power and possible intent, but these ones are practical. They are meant to be used. The intention was that Hunting Tower, or the House of Riven, as it was known in, up until the 1600s, uh, would be attacked because the Rivens were a mischievous bunch. They conspired against the Crown on several occasions, and it actually ended up costing them their heads. The famous episode known as the Riven Raid is probably the best known example and that's where a 16 year old King James VI was actually held here against his will. He thought he was just staying the night. He ended up staying for 10 months. Slight extension on his travel plans. In 1600, after what was possibly a second attempt on the king's life, they finally got tired of the Rivens' conspiracies, and the Rivens were executed summarily. That meant their lands were up for grabs, and their very name was actually banished from the land, with this castle, formerly known as the House of Riven, becoming what it is today, Hunting Tower. The castle was passed to the Murrays in the early 1600s. It wasn't until later on in the century that they filled in the gap that you can see behind me. The origin of the gap itself is a bit of a mystery. Why on earth would you build two towers so close together but not actually link them up? Well, some think that each tower was really for the first Earl's two sons. So that was William granting two places to each kid, and we know how brothers get along not terribly well. So maybe he wanted to keep them separate, but show a sense of unity, at least to everyone else. Some say that it was a feud later between the two brothers that actually made them split, but we'll never know, and it's these kinds of mysteries that make places like Hunting Tower fascinating to explore. It's not all grim at Hunting Tower though, there is one nice romantic story to go along with it, which reflects sort of the light and dark nature of the castle itself. We're up on top of the castle on the wall walk, and this is the Maiden's Leap in behind me. It's a great story that goes along with it, and it's the daughter of the first laird, Dorothea Riven, who was dallying, shall we say, with a local man uh, who wasn't quite as rich as herself, so it's a classic sort of rich-poor story. He was given lodging in one tower, her lodgings were in another tower. One night they were together in John Weems' chamber when Dorothea heard her mother coming up the stairs. She rushed up to the top of the tower and leapt over to the other one. That's a distance of three meters with a nearly hundred foot drop down to the bottom. Pretty committed. And when her mother burst into John's chamber, of course, Dorothea wasn't there. 
not believing John that she had never been there, she marched over to Dorothea once more and found her in her bed. So the two completely got away with it, and the next day they eloped and were married shortly thereafter. So it's not all bad news, a hunting tower.